Hello guys, welcome back to the 7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily 7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the important points about the beam design. So in this lecture, we are going to focus on the main importance to remember while designing the beam. So the first point states So the first point states that the beam should have width to depth ratio of more than 0.3. So it means that the width and the depth ratio should always be greater than the 0.3. If I consider the beam in 3D, so let's suppose this is a beam. And this is the length of the beam, this is the width of the beam, and this is the depth or the height of the beam. So let's consider after designing this beam, my beam width comes out to be 200 mm. The depth of beam comes out to be 500 mm. So I should check whether my width to depth ratio is greater than the 0.3 or not. So width to depth ratio is, width is 200 and depth is 500. So dividing this, we get 0.4. So it means 0.4 width to depth ratio is greater than the 0.3. So we are satisfied with the first condition for the designing of beam that it is it is good to have the beam width to depth ratio of greater than the 0.3. The second important point about the designing of beam is so if you have beam if you design the beam so it's always its width should be at least 200 mm. So if I design this beam, let's suppose there's a cross section of the beam, this is the width of this beam and this is the depth of this beam. So the width of this beam, the width of this beam should be at least 200 mm or greater than the 200 mm. It is the restriction on the design of beam that the minimum width should be equal to 200 mm. It means that it should not be less than the 200 mm, it should not be 150 or 100 mm. It should be at least of 200 mm or greater than the 200 mm. This is second restriction on the geometry of the beam cross section. The third point is the third point states that overlapping length or the overlapping should not be less than the 75 centimeter. If I consider this is beam, this is in a beam. Here, this any beam supported here and here, and there's the overlapping of the steel bars here in the beam. So this is the overlapping of the steel bar. They're joined together. So this overlapping length of the steel bar should be not less than the 75 centimeter. It should always be greater than the 75 centimeter or seven. 750 millimeter. This is the requirement for the overlapping of steel bars in case of the beam design. The fourth point is So the fourth point is that when the depth of the whip in a beam exceeds 750 mm the skin or side reinforcement should be provided in the beam. So to explain this, let's consider this the cross section of the beam and this is the 3D view of the beam. This is the 3D view of this beam and this is the cross section of the beam. So if this is my depth of the beam, D, and this is the width of the beam, so when the depth of the whip in a beam, this is depth, if, if it exceeds 7, 750 mm, if the, this depth is, let's suppose, is 900 mm, which is more than the 750 mm. So what should we do? We should place the skin or side reinforcement should be provided in this beam. So these are the normal reinforcement, which are the compression and tension reinforcement. But if the depth is more than the 750 mm, like in this case it is 900 mm, then we should provide the skin or side reinforcement. So these are now called as the side or skin reinforcement because they are provided at the side face of the beam. So these are called as the side or skin reinforcement. You see here along the 
depth of the beam they are provided to avoid the cracks creating in the height of the beam along the height of the beam along the depth of the beam there are some cracks due to the more width due to more depth of the beam so to stop these cracks along the depth of the beam we provide these skin reinforcement or the side reinforcement along the depth of the beam when the depth of the beam is more than the 750 mm the fifth important point is now the fifth point is again about the depth of the beam so here we can see here the beam depth should not be more than the 1 over 4 of the clear span so if this is considered the length of the beam which is the clear span of the beam let's suppose is 5000 millimeter so my depth should my beam depth should not be more than the 1 over 4 of the clear span so if this is my beam cross section this is the depth of the beam so depth of the beam should be 1 over 4 of the clear span and 1 over 4 of the clear span is 5000 millimeter so it means the depth of beam comes out to be 1 to 5 0 millimeter so my beam depth should not be more than the 1250 millimeter or 1.250 meter my beam depth should always be less than this value because it is a requirement for the design that the beam depth should not be more than the 1 over 4 of the clear span you should know the clear span dividing it by 4 and it should not be more than the 1 over 4 of the clear span the sixth important point about the beam design is so the sixth point states in overlapping zone the spacing of strap should not exceed 150 mm it means if this is my beam and if this is the overlapping of the steel bar here so if I put the stirrups here these are the stirrups provided along the beam as we know that the, the stirrups should always be closed in case of the overlapping zone so the in overlapping zone this is the overlapping zone L this is the overlapping zone so the spacing of stirrup should not be exceeded the 150 mm so in case of the overlapping zone the spacing of these stirrups the stirrups should be not exceeding the 150 mm it should always be less than the 150 mm and case of the overlapping zone this is the special requirement of the overlapping zone in case of the beam the seventh point is the seventh point states that the minimum diameter of the stirrups is 8 mm it means that the diameter of the stirrup should not be less than the 8 mm. It should be at least equal to 8 mm, the minimum. So if I draw the, this is the beam, and this is the longitudinal reinforcement, and these are the stirrups, or we call it the transverse reinforcement for the confinement or for the increasing the shear capacity of the beam. So we provide these stirrups or the transverse reinforcement. So the diameter should be at least of 8 mm or should be greater than the 8 mm but it should not be less than the 8 mm it should not be less than the 8 mm it should be greater than the or should be equal to 8 mm this is the minimum requirement on the diameter of the stirrups used in case of the beam design hope you guys understand about the important points regarding the beam design which should always be uh, which should always be fulfilled while designing the beam and for more civil engineering videos, please subscribe my channel.